Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to being here. Yes. Ah, our first show of 2022. I'm Ariel. I'm Shia. And today the theme is everybody matters or nobody matters. Because it occurs to us it's so easy to X out people because you think they're less or you're on your way somewhere and you you forget that the people around you are actually the people who are populating your life in this moment. Uh, so today we're just going to take a look at that and play with that and be here and see what happens. Yeah. Want to listen? Want to start your new year listening? Well, let's talk about listening then. Okay. Let's look at listening as from a, a whole new place. Yeah, as a unique opportunity to witness the current moment of your life. I love that. I'm not sure I've ever heard you say that before. A unique opportunity to witness the current moment of, of your, your life. life. Witness, observe, see. Be with. Love it. Yeah, you know, most of us, most of the time, are rushing to get somewhere that we think is more important than where we are. And where we are is where our life is unfolding. You know, sometimes I think of the word witness as in to see. Mm -hmm. But witness can also be to hear. Well, if you listen with your eyes, if you see what's right in front of you. It's witnessing. You're witnessing. But if somebody's listening to this podcast with their eyes closed, they have, I'm imagining, uh, headset. headset or earbuds or something playing where you're hearing this moment. You can witness it by simply listening to hear what's being said. And you don't need to add anything, do anything with it. Mm. It's nice, right? It is, yes. Our approach is not psychotherapeutic. Although it is finishing each other's sentences. Well, that we do. Which makes it fun because you get to see the moment unfold. What I say, uh, I'll start a sentence or what Shai starts what the other of us ends it with may or may not be precisely the words and sometimes even the the direction of what we were saying is going but if you follow the moment it's this incredible grand adventure so it's not psychotherapeutic it's anthropological it's about discovering how to be in the current moment of your life it's not about getting somewhere because you already are in the current moment of your life. So now the game is to slow down enough to be here because we have this incredibly quick mind. You know, people go and spend time in meditation centers to try to quiet their speedy minds. What if, if you're just with it, it'll quiet itself? If it does, and if it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. That's true. <laughs> you know, uh, on this theme of everybody matters or nobody matters, uh, I, I just saw it a different way. It's like if you're here and you have a speedy mind, it matters or it doesn't matter. There's not the good Shia, the good Ariel, and then if we fall off center or our mind gets speedy, then it's the bad uh, shy or the bad area. Well, here's the thing. We've been raised in the realm of change, not in the realm of transformation. And change is about good and bad, right and wrong, beautiful and ugly, better and worse. Richer and poor, sickness and worse. <laughs> I'm kind of going on anyway. In any event, uh, we've been raised in change. The idea of transformation is that if you simply see things the way they are, they transform in the moment of your seeing them rather than you're working hard to 
change what you think should be different than what is? No, and uh, this morning's or uh, afternoon, depending on where you are, this episode uh, description said our society is fragmented by the idea that some folks are better than others. What if it's what if each of us matter simply because we are human? Tune into being here and celebrate your perfection and the perfections of others as That's well. Fun. You ready to meet another human? I am. A perfect one? Yes. Let's do that. Thomas, welcome to being here. And please tell people where you are Zooming in from. Hello, Ariel and Shaya. Nice to meet you. I'm Thomas. I'm calling in for, from Alschwil in Switzerland. Alschwil? Yes, right. That's near Basel in Switzerland. Uh, does that word, you know... Have a meaning? Have a meaning? Probably it has, but I don't know which one, so okay. no idea. You know, sometimes uh, words have a, a translation and others, they're just names. So I was just curious. What can we do for you, sir? So my question is, how is it possible to go through life with the idea that everybody matters or nobody matters? Because I often go through, <clears throat> through life uh, with the idea that everybody matters, but I do not matter. And that's a bit uh, difficult sometimes and can be quite stressful. Well, first of all, you're one of everybody. And if everybody matters, then you matter. Mm. Then if we look at the three principles of instantaneous transformation, Thomas, clearly you are appreciating or don't like or don't want the idea that you don't matter. It's something that you would prefer was not your reality. Mm. So normal you're probably resisting that you think that well i i'm interested in who is the i that doesn't matter good question I, mm. you know mm -hmm. I think it comes from a pers pers perspective uh from a younger me a very younger me a child okay could it be that that just happens to be the voice you listen to? Yeah, of course, yes. Yeah. Of Thomas, and you think is you. Mm. But in your day-to-day -day life, your voice does not speak to you in Swahili. Oh, it doesn't speak in Swahili, no. Swiss German. Yes, and occasionally when you've been around enough English speakers, you may think somewhat in English, but you probably don't speak in Chinese either. No, I don't speak in Chinese. Good. So that that I is distinctly Swiss or English speaking and with a smattering of anything else that you may speak. Pig Latin for me. You know. Okay. Uh, so I like you looking at that I, because well, it's a construct of our language. Yes, but it's also a conversation that you listen to that you believe is you doing the speaking. Yeah. Well, I don't think so. My experience is that conversation is a recording and it responds to your environment and what's going on, but it's an old conversation that you've had before. Yeah, no, no, of course, yeah. I, I'd be really surprised if you always think I don't matter. I imagine it's situationally re-triggered yeah. when you have something in front of you that's either a little frightening, you don't know what to do, uh, it's another situation, 
that might be similar to one where you have the idea that you failed in the past, like you're going to ask somebody out and you're afraid they may say no, or you have something at work, you're not quite ready to start. So you can have that conversation with yourself. I think it's a recording from, uh, uh, from when, when I was a child, when many bad things happened at school and it mostly comes up at work. When but you know something, Thomas, I think everybody had a rough time in childhood. Yeah. I don't know anybody who didn't have some rough times at school. And Kids are brutal. And children are not very nice to each other. <laughs> That's true, yeah. You know, and, and see, you can either uh, hold that up in front of you as a truth, or you can include it and bring it along with you as you fully engage in what you're up to. Otherwise, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're only half here, people are going to kind of try to come to get you to come out. Well, if you believe what that voice says, then you never stop to look to see who you are being in any given moment. Mm, now, course. I have a conversation. I have a conversation that goes something like this. You're not very good with your hands. Or I am not very good with my hands. You know, I, I'm not very good at building things. I'm not good at making things. I'm not good at repairing things. Except I am good at building things, at making things, and repairing things. The conversation doesn't change. It's the same conversation Oh, I don't know if I'll be able to do this. When does it play? Whenever there's a project that I haven't done before. And sometimes even when I have done that type of thing before. And uh, I hesitate in beginning. So if I don't take action, the conversation comes up. I'm not very good at this. Mm. You know. Uh, we had a leaking faucet in our guest bathroom. And so I turned the water off to the whole house because I didn't think the valves that were attached to the sink would close completely. Now they did close, mm -hmm. but I, after I turned the water off, I drove to the Home Depot store to get parts to fix the faucet well uh, then when i came back none of the parts worked so i went and you know i i watched how my mind kept saying see you're not very good at this uh, eventually i changed out the faucet got a whole new one and installed it and it works and it works the way it's supposed to work and there's no more dripping, no mm -hmm. leaks. So even though my thoughts are, I'm not very good at this, it's done. You know, you if you look, anytime you start something new, a new project, you have thought, I'm not very good at this, or something similar to that. Yeah. And you can either stop there as though that thought is true and right, or you can engage in looking and seeing what's needed and provide it. Mm. I have a suspicion you haven't caught that nobody matters. Uh, is everybody matters or nobody matters? Mm -hmm. You say, I, I don't matter, everybody does. But the flip side of that is none of them matter, only I do. And you don't recognize when you're uh, saying only I do, I'll give you an example. So I was sitting here watching you because we have the video component on as we're recording this so that we can see you as we're speaking. And I saw you, you were talking with Shia just a moment ago and you looked so handsome. 
And I have a feeling as I go, oh, you're so handsome. You don't want to hear that. that there's a part of you that goes, oh, no, no, I'm not. Oh, she just thinks so. That's you saying nobody matters, but what's in this story? That because if you heard that a woman who I'm assuming you have some respect for, who you can see she has a relationship that she loves, find you very handsome, it wars with the story that you carry around about yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's really nobody matters or nobody matters or everybody matters and everybody matters. Mm. How about you matter? What's exactly the question? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't understand. Well, how about you matter as a, try this on as mm. a as a hat as a true hat mm -hmm. you matter yeah somehow matter for myself just i have to be in good enough for myself not for anybody else that's yeah, probably the point no, you, you're, you're never going to be good enough for yourself because you're you, you're calling yourself this conversation that finds fault with you that's the same as that I. I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't approve of this. I'm not good at this. I, 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 I. <laughs> you know, if you have to approve of you, that boy, that's a whole lot of work. You know, it would be nice, Thomas, if you could take a breath and just be here without having to produce anything for anybody, mm. not for you, not for me, not for Ariel, where you could just be okay being you. And by the way, you can't be anybody but you. Yeah, of course. You gotta enjoy it. <laughs> I have a friend, Tom, uh, who says, enjoy your life, nobody else will. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> Who is it that said, be yourself, everyone else is already taken? I don't know. Somebody famous. Now me. I just said it. Be yourself, yeah. everybody else is already taken. Yeah. Mm. I'm really happy to be with you. You know, uh, sometimes people come and they are on, on this podcast with us. We haven't seen them for a little bit. And I, I don't realize that I've missed them. But then in seeing them, it's like, oh, Thomas, <laughs> it fills my heart. It's so lovely to see you, Thomas, really. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ariel speaks for me there, too, you know. Thank you. Mm. Appreciate that. That's great. It's that time. The time for what? Our listener feedback spotlight what is that well i'm so proud of the people who listen to this show and now we get to hear from one or more of them to, about about what's happening in their lives with transformation by listening to this podcast and what or, they've discovered about life what they've mm -hmm. discovered about their lives that they are experiencing fun in their lives and that they want to share it with you yeah this is tanya um, from Oxford in England um, and I was reminded this weekend um, when I first encountered transformation I was in a big fight with my ex-husband and this weekend he came to visit and we had such a sweet time with with I had such a sweet time with him and with my daughter um, it was just something I could never have imagined um, and for me, transformation is exactly that. It's things that I experience, aware of experiencing life that I never could have imagined before. I'm Anina in Thun, Switzerland. And one thing I love about transformation is that I got licensed to be happy without any reasonable reason. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? 
Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Ariel and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. We have one more Living Made Easy seminar before we head off to Costa Rica. It's next Monday. And then they resume on Saturday, February 5th. Our next... uh, Weekend seminar. Is this weekend. Fun as the access way to enlightenment. Yeah. Why not skip the conversation about resolutions? what you need to do to be a better you and start having fun. Right. What have you done for fun lately? Mm. So if you want to join us, come have fun. Uh, It's this weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And then in March, on the 5th and 6th, we are doing a weekend seminar called Passion. Revitalize your life. Mm. And uh, shout out to all those of you who are coming to Costa Rica. We'll see you in about 10 days. And uh, some of you in just a little over two weeks because you're coming the following Saturday. A uh, shout out today to a couple who demonstrated recently that everybody matters or nobody matters. Our friends, Michelle and Susan, who went uh, to have their final meeting with an official at the federal building who was very officious according to them to find out whether or not their marriage was a real thing or something just to try and get him a green card for the or get him american get him american citizenship and according to susan and michelle she asked a whole lot of questions she was very stiff and very professional and right in the middle she stopped and said i feel really good being with you two it's common And then, of course, she subsequently gave him his green card. So two things. Congratulations, Michelle, on now uh, being officially uh, part of the United States and uh, able to be here with your lovely wife, Susan. But also that you didn't treat this lady as a stepping stone to get what you want, that you were clearly really being there with her as if she mattered, not as if she was a device. And not as if she was a barrier to get through to get somewhere else. So I I really, uh, really honor that. Okay, so let's take our next guest. guest. Val. Welcome to being here. And where are you calling? Zooming in from. Hi, I'm Val, zooming in from Montclair, New Jersey. I hear people live in Montclair, New Jersey. It is true. There are great people here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm so happy to be with you guys today. And uh, I love I love so many things of what you're talking about. But in particular, uh, you said something in the last segment, Shia, about like uh, how you have these thoughts and these conversations about you're not good at things and you in reality are. Um, and I find that happening with myself, um, at work in, in, I'm sure in other places, but that's where I've been noticing it lately where I, I'm in a position where I have an expanded role at work and I'm really enjoying it. I I love it. I love the work. I love where I work and I really enjoy the people I work with. Um, and part of the expanded role includes managing somebody on my team. We are a team of two, uh, right now. And, I find that challenging at times and I, cause I realize when I'm working on my own, I can be hard on myself and have high expectations and I can often translate to the person that I, I supervise. So I guess I struggle with like treating this person as, you know, she, she's wonderful at what she does, but also making sure the work gets done. And I, and when I point out things she may not see doing that in a way that she can hear me, um, cause I feel like sometimes I feel heard and sometimes I don't, and I know I have 
to do with that. So <laughs> I wanted to talk maybe, about that. Maybe you do and maybe you don't. Maybe she treats you like she treats her mother. <laughs> yes. See. Uh, In which case she could also set you up to behave like that's right. Uh, her mother, too. I knew you would say that. I knew you would do that. <sighs> yes. you know, there's, a, there's a way to operate with you that, that will stimulate your frustration or irritation. And then it gets to replicate what's familiar. And then the way out of that, in my experience, is to recognize that your irritation and frustration is yours alone, not in not caused by to her. Okay. See, if you're not irritated, I mean, she could get to you, right? But it would be very difficult. Mm. If you're not irritated. If you're already disturbed, upset, irritated, then any kind of aberration and behavior is enough to have you start to feel that upset that disturbance in your yes. state. it's gotcha. fun hearing you talk about this because you have worked for us part-time for a number of years it's much less now that you and your husband walt have had your child logan who's just a gorgeous little being so the, the amount of time that you work for us is much less. But in a certain respect, you could be describing our relationship. Because <laughs> when you're talking about team, it's a team of two. And there was something you said at the very beginning. Uh, it, I think it's helpful, been helpful for me to consider it a partnership. Rather, I don't ever think about me managing Val. It's like Val and I are working on something together. She's handling this aspect. I'm handling that aspect. How are you doing with this aspect? And also paying attention to the fact that there are certain parts of working for us that you have personally found more confronting than others. So it's really been important that I'm responsible to make sure that you're taken care of whenever you meet something that you've considered to be you're not good enough to do it ah oh, that's so cool that's I like how you put that yes and included in that Val is owning your hidden skill sets so Shia may think he's not very good at working with his hands but it's it's he has forgotten things that I will never learn about working with things mechanical and just he's so good at it. He underestimates how skilled he is. And I have a feeling when you go to manage your friend, <laughs> my partner, yeah. that you get irritated with certain what you might consider shortcomings or things she's not following through on because you underestimate how good you are at them. And it wasn't necessarily all, always the case. Ah, how did I get here? Yes. How did I, what, how did I learn that? Because I recall in the early days when we worked together and both of us were a lot less secure, you would handle everything on your list except for the big ticket ones. Like you'd send out press releases to every, all magazines small and forget the Oprah magazine. Because it was more confronting, and what if whatever? What if she doesn't? I, I don't know. It was it was a systematic thing at the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if this person you're talking about does similar things to what Ariel just said. Oh, uh, she she does really really yeah. well. She looks that you know everything big that everything she doesn't know how to do gets pushed off to the side, and she's really good at what she knows how to do. Yes, you yes, absolutely. That's and for me, I can either get irritated with you at that point, or I can realize I abdicated certain things rather than delegated because I didn't think I was good enough at doing those things either. Ah, oh, cool. 
Gotcha. You said she's really good at what she does. There was a, a kind of a, a ghost off. of much better than I am at certain things. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't take into account her thoughts about herself and how each of us downplay our genius, downplay our brilliance and see ourselves as somehow limited or broken. Mm. And the reality is you're broken if you think you're broken. Because we follow our thoughts as though they're truths. And that's the other thing. A lot of what we believe to be true is garbage. You know, in computer talk, there was a word called gigo means garbage in, garbage out. Put garbage in, you're going to generate garbage. That's right. You put garbage into your computer, what's going to come out is garbage. Right. Well, same thing. If you believe your shortcomings, then that becomes your reality. Doesn't mean it's accurate. Doesn't mean it's true. It's just your computer, your internal computer, will only operate with the information you have in it. And if the information is inaccurate, like you're not enough, well, then it will pump out, you're not enough. And it gets to be right about that. But that doesn't mean it's the truth. Yeah. When you're irritated or think you've done something wrong, that tends to be when you find other people wrong or less speaking for myself yes it was I I just flashed on something because I remember earlier on when we were publishing some of our earlier books the the being here book uh when we published that we went through it we had it edited we had all of these proofreaders we found all of the typos we were all very excited. We got red letters for yay, star, we found a, a misspelling. We published it. It came out. People enjoyed it. And then we decided to do it as an audiobook. So I took the actual hard book, hard cover, you know, it's a it's not a hard cover book, but it's the an actual paperback. And I took it into the studio and I read it. And I found more typos in that thing. Not a lot, you know, not like big things, but missing commas or apostrophes in the wrong place or missing words. Or I found at least a half a dozen of them. And I found it as such a win. It was so much fun to see that there was more of me there to see these, quote, mistakes that nobody in the history of reading the book had ever pointed out. And none of us as a talented group of people had ever found. It, it, uh, we were talking with Thomas earlier about you matter and then everybody matters. You don't matter. Nobody, nobody matters. matters. And it, it was fun to go through and find the quote mistakes because they weren't mistakes. It was just the next moment and there was more of me available. That's so awesome. I, I love that. And I, and, and, and if the, I, I can relate to this because in the, the job that we are doing now, other people did these jobs before us and we're finding new ways and in, in, in our opinion, better ways to do like more efficient ways, but uh, it's really to make them wrong or the way they did it wrong is really not helpful in any way. Um, well, let's go back to uh, your working for me. There were times where you would put together copy for a press release and it was far easier for me to go through and make it more efficient and better than it was to create it in the first place. Ah, right. Okay. That's created a template that's clear enough for you to be able to go through and see, Oh, we could do it this way. It'd be more efficient. Tells you they did a really good job. Yes. Yeah. That's so cool. This is so great. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Did you know one other thing? There is likely a residue on the documents or in the digital files of how the person thought about themselves while they were creating it. 
Oh. And if you don't listen to that as if it's true, but include it, anything you see without judging completes itself. That is awesome. I can actually, like, I have a, a visual image of some of the documents that I can, and how I felt when I look at them. Like, actually, earlier today, I was looking at one of these documents, and I was like, oh, I, how can I write? Like, I need to write a new version of it for this year. And I'm like, oh, I, I, I'm I, not good at this. How am I going to do this? So I love that you guys, you were talking about this. Well, anything you include completes itself if you resist that thought make it real think it means something it'll persist and it'll dominate the <laughs> well i am grateful for this conversation oh, one last thing Val. yes have you ever not gotten it done no so don't worry about it it's going to work out great yeah your worrying about it before you're doing it doesn't make it get any easier. <laughs> you know, you can't have a conversation with somebody until you're right in front of them. If you rehearse it, you're, when you have a conversation, it's old news. It's not appropriate. It's not in time with the moment. Don't worry about how it's going to go until you get to doing the work. You might discover it's a lot easier that way. But you know, as I look at you, Val, uh, it occurs to me that you've been working hard and yeah. rather than having fun. When you talked about the fun course, I'm like, I'm there. I'm totally, I'm taking that course. Yes. <laughs> you could start it right now, you see. Okay. As if... The course just began. Okay. Because otherwise, you, you're a victim of everything you have to do at work. You know, I've had this piece right. of wood in our yard, our front yard. It, it, it was like a section of a tree, and it was too big for me to move on my own. And today, there was a delivery of gravel, and they had to move this log out of the way to get the truck into our backyard. And I looked at and I said, you know, I could use my chainsaw and cut that thing up. And because it was so big, you see, uh, and cut it into sections and then I can move it. So I did exactly that. I got out my chainsaw and I cut it into five or six pieces. And I didn't cut all the way through it. I cut mostly through it because I didn't want my chain of the chainsaw to hit the rocks of the driveway, but I made enough of a, a a cut in it that I could put a wedge in, a steel wedge, and hit it with a sledgehammer and pop it off. And so now I have four or five or six pieces, actually about six pieces. Uh, they're fairly decent size, but they're all manageable. So now I can cut that away, or I can use my wood splitter, split it up and burn it in a fire pit. Can I tell you? Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. He, uh, he has forgotten things he knows about woodwork that I will never know, or I might learn just by listening. But I, I like that as an analogy. You've got this big project to do, and it's too big to be movable. You just <laughs> take off a little, chop a little here, and chop a little there, break its integrity. But the other thing is. Love it didn't require yourself to completely complete that you did enough that so you wouldn't dull your blade enough so you wouldn't dull your blade and then it became easily doable the fine tuning part a little bit later right exactly uh, just saying that's awesome you ever do that Val? you got a linear thing thinking i'm doing this project and i got to do it from beginning to end before it's done i and do i have done and then move on to the next thing maybe you do some and move to the next thing, and then you come back and it's easily doable. And if you break it into pieces, then you can lift them and move them. If it's all one big mass, it's it's way too heavy to manipulate and function with. Right. That's so great. Thank you. You know, it's fun watching your face. Here we are. We're talking. It's an hour later. 
So, and we're recording this in the afternoon. So by all uh, normal, logical, we should be more tired than we were at the beginning. But you look uh, more re- awake and I feel more refreshed. rejuvenated. So yes, me too. Thanks for being with us. I mean, awesome. I, you've even got me thinking about going fishing now. Ooh. A couple hours of light left today. Yeah, good. It is beautiful. Well, where I am. It's what? It's beautiful, it's beautiful out today. Yeah. Hey, and next week's episode, by the way, is with your husband. Oh, that's great. Something from everyone with Walt Blau. <laughs> I spoke oh. very highly of we, you. We recorded it right before this one. So uh, you're going to enjoy listening to it. That's so awesome. Well, he is, he's, I love him and he's awesome to listen to too. So that's great. There you go. There you have it. Uh, thank you guys so much. Yeah. Hey, thanks for uh, thank you. being with us. And uh, thank you both. Thanks really for enjoying great. your life. And uh, to all our listeners, <laughs> hey, thanks for starting the new year, the right. new year with us. And uh, we hope to actually see you sometime soon. Come join us. I, I know a lot of you listen and listen. And the Zoom videos are really fun. It adds the element of getting to see folks. And, uh, and you, would, you can come from you. anywhere in the world, you see. Yeah. We, uh, it's fun on Monday nights. We have a couple of regular night owls in well, Europe who come well, we have from a lady midnight in, to two. Yes, and we have somebody from Hong Kong. Who comes in. And, and she's exactly 12 hours opposite hours. And when I, I did the morning... Saturday morning when I was off visiting my dad mm-hmm. uh, in Oregon, it was so much fun to get up at like 4.30 and come, you know, I had to get up early enough to get ready, but then also to go find a Starbucks. And then I actually even sat in a, a parking lot as it got light. I sat under a light so that, uh, and I tuned in from my phone. So wherever you're tuning in from, you'd be welcome and uh, hope you join us. Thanks, Val. And thanks Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for being with us. So again, next week's episode is You Can Learn Something from Everyone with Walt Blau. So hope you come on back. And don't miss being here. Yeah, I love when you say that. Thank you. 